athlete's wife right yes okay great yes. so let's set the official introductions diana do you mind introducing yourself to the viewers who is diana yeah of course well let me just say i'm a little nervous so if you guys see me sweating it's because i'm nervous i am the daughter of two immigrants so i was born here in the united states in arizona my parents are from mexico okay. and i am the oldest of two i'm the only girl i have two younger brothers that i actually live with Mm -hmm. And I majored in nutrition dietetics, and that is what I currently do right now. I'm a nutritionist. Um, and yeah, I'm just a hard worker. <laughs> okay. okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. And the reason I brought you in today is because um, along with all that stuff, you're also um, the wife of an athlete, in this case, a baseball player, He's a pitcher, correct, for the Chicago Cubs? Yes, I am uh, married to an amazing man who happens to be a baseball player. Great stuff. So, um, so we're going to start from that premise because the, the whole thing about, you know, the more than series is to highlight the fact that, you know, people in this case, women in this specific case are more than, you know, the, the, the stereotype that society tends to give them more than what they look like on the outside, the more than the looks, the more than, you know, what you've heard about them, the more than the sexuality, etc. Just trying to see the rest of you, you know, more yeah. than who, who's the rest of Diana, you know, more than just an athlete's wife in this situation. So... So let's start there. You know, you said um, the, the dietitian stuff, right? Yes. Well, so nutritionist. nutritionist. I don't want to take credit away from the dietitians. Okay. But I did. I went to school for nutrition dietetics. Okay. Uh, my dream uh, was to work with athletes. Like when I was done with school, I got to work with the NFL. I got to work with the MLB. I got to work with soccer teams. Sick. Um, I also got to work with the general population. Um, the reason why I went into nutrition dietetics is when I was younger, I was bullied. I actually got an eating disorder. I was in eighth grade, so I don't remember how old you are in eighth grade, maybe like 12. Um, and I had a dietitian who really touched me and made me want to be, you know, focus on better eating and loving yourself. So I went to school for that. When I was in school, I started working out and I really enjoyed nutrition and sports so mm -hmm. to me i was like that's a great combination you know and mm -hmm. that is how i like kind of got introduced to that world in a sense okay my thing wasn't never like oh let me see if i find an athlete it was like right. it just happened you know right. right that's really interesting i mean um the whole nutritionist thing and dietitian thing it's an interesting space because you know your your motivation to do that came from your personal experience you know it's kind of like from my own experience this helped my life and so I want to kind of just learn a lot more about it. But a lot of people have this idea of, you know, when they were kids, they want to, you know, marry some rich dude, they want to marry a celebrity, you want to marry an athlete, marry a prince and stuff like that. But I'm guessing that wasn't your motivation when you were when you were younger. It wasn't like, I'm going to live off some, some rich guy. Or was it? No, no. Um, I was always the rebellious kind that, like, independent woman, I don't need no man type. Okay. <laughs> that, like, sometimes insulting in ways to my parents, like, because my mom coming here from Mexico, she always helped my dad grow his business right. and it's a landscaping business. So she's like his secretary. And sometimes I, and like my ignorance would be like, well, I'm never going to depend on a man, you know, like that's just always been me. So mm -hmm. for, for when people think like maybe the, you're with your person because you're a gold digger, it's like, if you only knew, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that being said now, you being with an athlete, the, the immediate, um, conception it might be a misconception is that yeah she's with this guy and she's just living off his riches or she's just living off his fame just living off his fortune you know and speaking to you already I know that that's a huge misconception do you mind you know delving into a bit more on that in terms of your experience since um since you've been with him yeah I mean there's so many layers to this so I I don't know where you want me to start first of all we're not rich we don't have fortunes um in baseball it actually does not work like that um you have to play a certain number of years in the league before you even have a chance to go to arbitration to get your contract so right now like people like just because you're dating an athlete doesn't mean they're making millions i'm sure in football it works the same way like you have to play a certain number of years or you know to to make your contract so it's just like it's not automatically like you're with this guy and you have it too, you know, like we've both worked really hard. When I met Adbert, he was <clears throat> still in the minor leagues. Um, and actually, I just remembered this story yesterday because I was talking to one of my friends on here. 
And um, our first date, he messaged me because we were friends, like because we knew each other from similar, like from our circle. And he asked me to go on a date. And I was like hesitant because I was scared. You know, I had left a relationship prior to Abbott where it was very mentally abusive. So I was in a point in my life where I wanted to be alone and I was very comfortable alone. Right. So he asked me on a date and we went to this restaurant that has salads because I love salads and okay. he hates salads. Okay. So um, we went there, we had a great time and I paid. I, I took the bill and to me it wasn't, it was more one of those things like, I want you to know today that if this works out, I'm with you for you and not for what you can give me. Right. See, you know, see. so I established that on day one and um, he is not the kind of guy to ever let me pay. But like I, I wanted to prove a point, you know, and throughout that time until he actually like made it on the 40 man roster, I chose to take turns paying for things or go have right. these on things, because how can I expect so much of someone when you're trying to build your dream, you know, and like he like I said in last week, his family's in Venezuela, so some of that money he also had to send back home. So I felt very selfish to be like, oh yeah, you're sending money to Venezuela. You're also paying your bills, plus take care of me. Like, that's just not my person. Right, no, that's that's commendable. I mean, from my perspective, because I love the concept of a woman being able to, to hold her own and handle her own alongside a man that can handle his own and they come together as one. You know, I, I, I love that, but that's me. You know, a lot of women will look at what you did on that first date and say, girl, what you doing getting this guy to pay for? You crazy, girl. He gonna take the piss from here on out. He gonna, he gonna, he gonna make you pay for him. He gonna make you baby him. He gonna make you cook, clean, and all that shit. Like, yeah, but that's not who he was, you know? Mm. Well, you know, afraid of that, though. Like, you know, going into this into this world of dating, being, you know, a lady that can kind of um, provide for herself, being self-sufficient. Do you, do you ever feel like if I go into it like this, if I pay the first date, then the guy will basically take the piss going forward? You know there's going to be so many people that see this and I don't want it to be taken the wrong way or out of context. And to be honest, I think that depends yeah. on the person. Yeah. You know, I, I, I knew Adward cause we were friends and I knew the kind of gentleman he was and the kind of guy he is that I was never afraid of that because I knew he wasn't going to expect that. I knew right. for him, he was going to be so grateful that when he had it, he would never let me pay again. Right, right, you know, right. so like now that's how it is. Like anything we do together, he takes care of. But anything I want, like I went shopping for the photo shoot, I paid it. If right. I go, I buy my own tampons. It's not like, hey, mm. can you give me money for tampons? Like, mm. you know, like I, I have my money for myself, but like anything that I ever needed, like I know he has my back because we had our backs when we were both building our dreams. Okay, okay. No, that's 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 real encouraging to hear, you know. Um, and then when you go into the world, you know, into the athletics world, um, it's with a professional athlete, you know, beforehand things are what they are. And then after, once you guys get married and once it becomes pro, do you mind talking to me a little bit about the differences between, you know, the, the sweet romance before and then the serious romance after the fact? I mean, the romance hasn't changed. Your girl just flies, flies first class. Hey, you know? like, I've never been hey, on first class before. Yes. <laughs> and like, it, I'm not saying it in a snobby way, but it's like, I would always get on a plane and be like, damn, what's it like to sit in first class? What's it like to sit in first class? And it's like, now he's like, babe, like, we're gonna, we can drink something on the plane. Like, we, can, you know, like, we enjoy those moments together because he never been on first class either. Hey, You hey, know, like, hey, it was an experience for both class. of us. No, that's dope. That's dope. You know, so um, that's one of the luxuries, right? So the luxuries yes. are you can, you can live a better life, live a higher life, right? With the financial um, element of things, you know. But what about the impact on, on your personal lives be, beyond the finance? Has it been positive? Has it been negative? Or has much changed on, on that side of things? No, I think we're really still the same people. It, it hasn't really changed. I think I've become more protective of our energy and my energy. Like, for example, um, it's very simple for someone to, if he had a bad game, get on Twitter and say, oh, he sucks or, oh, he's supposed to be a prospect. Yeah. Like, it's so easy to judge when you're sitting on the couch and you've never actually been a pro athlete, right? We see it in every sport yeah. with LeBron, you know, with yeah, big football names. So I when I get yeah. on Twitter and I see comments like that, oh, mm -hmm. like, take my earrings, hold my earrings real quick. <laughs> I got to go. And I have to calm myself down in that aspect because there's always going to be haters. And I understand with social media, people will love you, people will hate you. But like Adbert is such an amazing person. Like mm. aside from being an athlete, that when you see people attack him, it mm. it kills me. 
Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, because sure. he's more than the pitcher on the field. He's more sure. than the guy signing autographs. He's a person. And all of us have an aspiration for a dream, right? We all want to have a dream. And these guys have worked their ass off, have sacrificed so much to get to their dream and achieve their dream. But then mm. all of a sudden they're being scrutinized because mm. they didn't want to play this season because COVID or, you know, mm. like they didn't throw the game how you wanted them to play. So now you have every right to scrutinize them. Like, mm. it's just like, it's, it's those little things that really get to my soul that I have yeah. to learn to better control because I don't know. It's just the protective side of me. I mean, so that being said, right, you know, you have a lot of these external influences in terms of like people commenting, people bashing the partner, bashing the athlete, and you being there to, or trying to protect them and trying to protect the energy, right? Yeah. Um, you know, let's link it to the stereotypes of things, right? A, a lot of these negative stereotypes also come into, the, into play when it comes to females from the outside world. You know, have you ever had to, you know, have you ever had a situation whereby, you know, your partner is in the midst of everything, lights, glitz and glam, whatever. And then you have to protect them in terms of females. You ever have to feel defensive in that sense of like, you know, temptation or groupies or stuff like that, you know? And we're gonna delve into him like when he goes on tour, when he goes to practice, you know, yeah. away games. You know, one of the things that I fell in love with Adbert was that where he placed me. Right. Like he always has made me feel so secure in our relationship and where I fall for him that right now, no, but mm. I'm not saying that he's going to change, but I'm also realistic that there are girls that no matter, like he couldn't even message them, but m girls could message him, right. you know, and I can't control girls messaging him. Like that's just yeah. out of my control. And I'm not going to stress myself out for something I cannot control. Sure. But, like, in regards to Adler himself, never. Like, he's never made me feel any sort of way at all, like, for me to feel insecure, to feel jealous. And I know that it's part of the package, that there are going to be girls that are going to be interested in him, and there are going to be girls that, you know, see who he is and are going to want him. But I feel, enough, like, secure enough in who I am and who mm. he is and who we are that I don't really give energy to those thoughts. Okay. Okay, that's great. And that's a testament. That's a testament to him as a man, you know, because yes. a lot of a lot of guys say girls are insecure, girls are crazy, but a lot of it comes from us as guys and how we actually make them feel in that situation. And we, we don't take, you know, responsibility for that a lot of times. But when a man can do what your partner's obviously been doing so far, it tends to end up as a beautiful relationship, you know, less issues, you know, from the outside world in that sense. That's really good to hear. Yeah, but like my ex, like yeah. he, he, he says I'm probably says I'm the craziest girl he's ever met. Because right. I was a different person with him. I was crazy because he had girls DMing him and he was DMing them back and I didn't have my place. So mm -hmm. I was a very broken, insecure person, which brought out another Diana that I'm not truly who I am. But he made me that way, which is why he's not no longer in the picture because I was so unhappy being that version of myself. Versus mm -hmm. Adbert understands who I am and I understand who he is, that we both value that, that we don't even let other things interrupt our friendship because yeah. even though we're husband and wife we were friends before we got married right you know right, right. so i think that also plays a huge role in our relationship right right let's let's latch on to that for a second man the idea of being friends before lovers right mm -hmm. you know we spoke on that briefly um last week when we were introducing this 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 topic how important is that to you you know i have my my, my perspectives on that but i'd love to hear yours you know because a lot of people think or feel like you know you can just find the one you know a lot of girls today are looking for the one a lot of people are talking about couple goals but they talk they're skipping a lot of steps before they get there in my opinion you know and then they expect things to last you know how important is establishing that friendship before you know the serious relationship or the serious marriage that you guys are at right now to me it's really important i think that when you automatically lust and love someone you create an image of who this person is right? right because they're like in that lust but when you're best friends with someone there's no pressure for anything because you're just friends so they're showing you who they truly are without any fear of okay maybe they'll leave me you mm -hmm. know so because him and i were friends before we started dating Adra knew exactly who i was mm -hmm. like a straight shooter like i'm the kind of girl that if i'm mad at you i'm gonna tell you i'm mad at you because this this and this like there's no silent treatment with me sure, sure. so like you know, so we got to know our personalities and that's when we real like I I fell in love with him because he made me laugh all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, like he understood who I was. He knew that I was 
going to therapy to deal with who I wanted to become and what had happened in my past. And like, he built me up and I built him up together. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's so important, and this is in all aspects, not just in the sports world, is that life is going to come with challenges, right? So for example, in my situation, because I can only speak for myself, love is very important because that's what keeps the marriage going. But so is patience. So is like so many other factors for example in this season i'm alone a lot because mm -hmm. well this season was different because covid but outside of covid i'm mm -hmm. alone a lot because he travels so right. it's like there are times where i'm in my like in the room by myself like if i really didn't love this person would i be okay being here alone right. i have to pack up the car and drive to the city where he's playing by myself you know but because there's so much more than just love it's friendship it's commitment it's wanting to grow together and knowing that we both have to make sacrifices for each other. Like mm -hmm. love isn't everything you, you have to have very opposites attract, but you also need similarities too. Mm -hmm. you know, if that makes sense. hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, that's really interesting. I mean, the importance of similarities and the importance of opposites is so dire, man, because you know, when, when shit, when shit hits the fan, it's those similarities that you kind of latch onto, you know, when yeah. shit gets boring, it's those opposites that you latch onto and you appreciate yeah. them. You know, I'm the shy, quiet one, and he's the crazy one. Like his hair is purple today. I just saw that. Yo, you'll, I just saw that. you'll I saw... see him in the car just <laughs> dancing at the light, and I'm the girl that's like, okay, then. Yeah, like, I'm you know, like right? we're just so opposite. Beautiful, beautiful. But I'm the budgeter. I'm like, we right. spend this money. We gotta save for this house. Like right now, we only have one car. Why do we need two cars? I'd rather get a down payment for a house. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm the that side and then he's right. more of like he brings the wild side out of me and i'm right. more of like the con not the controller i don't control him but more of yeah. like do we really need this you know yeah, kind sure. of thing. the rational mind in the midst of chaos it's beautiful yes yeah <laughs> the oxymoron of, of, of the relationship is, is dope um on that point whereby you said like sometimes he goes away uh, away games and stuff like that as a woman right as as you know what let's remove the gender from it as a person that that is in love with someone else naturally we tend to get like you know a little bit paranoid and insecure about that stuff you know when our partners are away someone just mentioned the concept of long distance relationships you know and this kind of links into this whole thing about away games and you, your your partner playing somewhere else practicing somewhere else for long periods of time during seasons and off seasons how do you deal with that you know it hasn't been difficult and you know i'm guessing it changed a lot after you, you know he went pro you know how do you maintain that sanity yourself without you know the 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 fear of you know the other woman and stuff like that um most importantly i have my own identity so when mm -hmm. he's gone i do things that make me happy that bring me back to the restore my energy right because season is very exhausting it's very stressful um if i need to cry i wait till he's gone so he doesn't see me cry because i don't right. want to worry him so right. like when he's on the road it's never like oh my god is there gonna be another woman it's more of like okay I need to work out. I need to make sure I take the car to the dealership to get an oil change. I need to clean the apartment. I need to pack this stuff. Like there's so much to do that that never crosses my mind because he's never given me a reason for it to cross my mind that I'm so grateful for that because I can focus on me becoming a better person so that when he needs me, I'm fully there and fully charged because sure. being a pro athlete comes with a lot of pressures. You know, like for example, this season, he went up and down a lot. Um, he was like a, a backup guy, I guess. I can't, there's a term, but I can't remember right now. He okay. was up and down and up and and that fucks with you. Like as a player, like, am I not good enough? Did they not want me? Like not saying that these are his words, but like these comes to your mind. So mm -hmm. me as a partner, I, I know when he's pitched, give him his space. Mm -hmm. He needs to process it. Right. The next day, he's going to vent with me. But if I'm having my own issues going on and my own stressors when he's venting, I'm not going to be able to recharge him. Right. So I take that alone time to recharge myself, whatever I'm feeling, whatever I need to do. I call my friends to recharge me, vent with whoever I need to vent with. And then I'm OK in a good mental space so that when he needs me, I'm there to support him because yeah. off season, it's reverse. Off right. season, he trains, but he supports my business. You right. know, he helps me with my meal preps. He helps with, you know, with all that stuff. And it's yeah. like when I need him, he's fully charged to recharge me. Sure, sure, sure. Well, that's that's dope, man. Two um, Duracell battery bunnies just <laughs> just working at it, you know. Um, just living life. <laughs> I hear that, man. You know what's interesting here is the the role that you play beyond um, just the lover. You know that 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 partner role, the partnership role, um, whereby you're supporting him emotionally, 
but then you're also talking about the organizational aspect of it, right? The, str the strategic mm -hmm. aspect of your lives. But before that, you said, I make sure I keep myself busy. And I, I understand the value of being busy and keeping your, your mind and your body busy because the devil makes work for idle thumbs. You said one thing that stops me from being you know, insecure and paranoid is I got shit to do mm -hmm. for yourself, you know, and that's, that's a really interesting space because a lot, I don't think a lot of people appreciate how important it is to keep active. Yeah, like at the end of the day, what, as a pro athlete or not, whoever your partner is, your goal is to retire and live a life and be happy, right? right? right. So that's our goal, to retire, be able to enjoy our kids when we have kids and enjoy life, you know? And we want to retire hopefully like 40s. Yeah. I don't know. You know, that's just the goal. So if I'm working super hard to make sure that I'm having some income coming in and mm -hmm. he's working super hard so he has income coming in, it's both our incomes. It's not like my income is mine and his is his. Like cool. it's together so that we both can get to that goal and enjoy our life because that's what the whole purpose is. Working cool. hard now to enjoy it later. 100%. You know? So one of the questions I asked um, Diana was, what had changed before they got married and after that? And did she have to give anything up to live this life, you know, to be with a partner, to support him? Did I have to give something up? Yes. Right. When I met Albert, I had a boutique, Eileen Couture. I had two locations okay. and um, I didn't travel with him. And um, that's the year that he got hurt and he came right. and he lived with me. Right. Albert is from Venezuela. I don't know how much you guys know what's going on in Venezuela, but he his family can't travel here. Right. Okay. He has no one. I am his family. Right. And it's very different for me. I have my whole family here. So I have a support system. I am his support system. Of course, he has his mom and his dad and his sister back home. He can call them any day. But it's very different when you're with someone. Mm -hmm. So I saw at that point, baseball can be very short lived. Any yeah. professional sport can be very short lived because you get a hurry, you could be done. Yeah. Versus owning a boutique, I could restart it at any point in my life because I knew it could always be there. Right. So I was like, you know what? It's okay. I'm going to close these, these shops. I'm going to travel with him because I want to be there. He never said close it. He never put he a never game in. Ultimate. I chose to do that because I wanted to be there for him because this is his dream. Mm. And that's what you do when you love someone. You both support each other. So mm. I closed the boutiques um, and I took a nine to five remote job so that I could travel everywhere with him and work from my computer. Right. And in that time period is when I started to rethink, like, what do I really want to do with myself? Because the boutiques aren't going to work. I'm not going to travel with inventory. And then that's when the meal preps came along and the meal plans right. came along because, you know, that I can travel with that. But right. I did have to, you know, let go of that. But I was OK with it because there's always a greater purpose, you know, for it. So right. that's why. OK, that's interesting. Um, I'm guessing you appreciated that, that sacrifice. Yes. Yeah, um, a lot of the stuff that you're 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 pushing at the moment um, is is partnership, you know, which I love, right? You know, the partnership between the two of you, you know, you balance each other out, the yin and the yang, you know, um, creating a beautiful feng shui of love, right? Trying, so, yes, every day. <laughs> every day, is, it's dope, right? So my thing is, you being you know a straight shooter and a lady that you know was always for herself in the beginning, how do you deal with? the spotlight on him how do you deal with this thing whereby you, you're potentially starting to be in the shadows in the public world you're in the shadows but in the real world your relationship you're not you know what does that feel like you know how, how, how does that feel do you feel like you're in the shadows or not i don't care it doesn't mm. bother me like I, I i don't mind being behind the scenes okay. like to me i didn't marry Edward to be some public figure some famous person like i married him for who he is and for who i love so right. if being in the shadows is it doesn't bother me at all, you know, okay. so. Okay, no, that's really good. And, um, you know, we're, we're touching on your relationship. That seems to be great, right? But then, because it's the misconceptions from the outside looking in, right? What do you think the greatest misconception is? You know, now that you're in that world and you've met the others, you know, and you know about your life, what is the greatest misconception that people tend to have about, you know, wags or, or wives and girlfriends of athletes? That these guys only want, like, that 10 out of 10 model girl. Okay. Like, they don't, like... Yes, a lot of them on Instagram that you follow, you know, have beautiful wives and beautiful girlfriends and beautiful fiancés, but not all of them aim for that. Not all of them strive for that. You know, there's a lot of guys that <clears throat> you wouldn't even know they're married to a girl, you know, like when you see them, like, I remember there was this one comment this girl made, I'm not gonna say who, but she was like, she's a wife, mm. you know, and it's just like, there's no, 
like silhouette there's no cookie sure. cutter for a wife everybody sure. is different there's going to be all sorts of girls that you meet you know i there's some of them that are nurses doctors one of the girls the occupational therapist you know like yeah. one of the girls that's um married to one of the the guys she does voiceovers for disney movies but Dick. you would never know like Dick. it's just they do big things they just yeah. don't talk about it because you know do you think they should talk about it more or do you think live and let live like let the stereotypes live i think the reason girls don't open up more is because of the shows on TV that have stereotyped our lifestyle to be a certain way that right. they just like why fight it you know right. you know like i feel like they don't want to waste their energy when they know who they are for okay. me it's not like i'm trying to fight the system i'm just trying to show you guys like or girls like don't strive to be that like it's not like i strive to be an athlete's wife like it sure. just happened yeah. so it's like don't make it your goal to be the wife of an athlete like be who you are be confident in yourself you want to get your lips done get your lips done for you like don't do it for the for the world you know like do whatever makes you happy and if you happen to fall in love or he happens to want to date you like it'll flow but when you become a cleat chaser when you become one of those girls that's always there always there always there always there, always there to get that athlete we know we yeah. they know we know yeah you know it's just like we're not stupid they're not stupid right that's that's interesting right so there's six things you can kind of tell who's just kind of there for the ride or who's just there you know to, to to chase the fame kind of thing um you you know you mentioned three different things that i i want to i want to jump on right in terms mm -hmm. of superficial superficiality in terms of looks right Mm -hmm. And you said, you know, these guys, it's not just about going for the most beautiful woman, you know, quote unquote beautiful, because that's another subjective concept, especially when you have social media, right? Yeah. Someone in my comments said, you know, um, if she loves herself so much, why did she get her lips done? Yeah, I commented back. You, you did. Can we, <laughs> can, we, can, we, can we touch on that for a second? Yeah, I just think like, I mean, his point was that I, I like, if I didn't feel like I had to fit some sort of athlete whack mold, why would I get my lips done? To be honest, nothing that I've ever done, Adward has paid for. And mm -hmm. everything that I did was before he was a pro athlete. Right. So it's like, for you to assume that I did it to fill a, a mold, you're already judging me without even knowing me. Oh. And it's like, you already know my story. Like I was bullied as a kid. I like, you know, so it's not like I just decided to do my lips to fit a mold. There's so much history besides behind why someone decides to do what they do. Right. So like for me, I did my lips because I just wanted big lips. Like what's wrong with that? You know, mm -hmm. I dyed my hair. I wanted to dye my hair. What's wrong with that? And it's just like, it, it does. And just because a woman does something, it has nothing to do with the man. I didn't do it to please Adver. Adver had no idea. He was actually mad. He's mm -hmm. like, why are you changing yourself? I love you for you. But I wanted my lips done. Sure, sure. You know? So sure. it's just like, guys need to stop assuming that because a girl does something, it's for a guy. Like, we do things for, I work out for myself. Yeah. I want to look good in my clothes. Like, it's not because I'm trying to, like, be the beautiful wife of Adward Alsele. It's because I want to feel beautiful for myself. Because right. when you feel good, you, you you do good. You know, your work is better. You work out better. Like, you treat people better because it radiates, right? So what am I just supposed to just not do something so I don't get people upset? Like, I, I don't know. That's just how I feel about it. No, no, no. I love that. I love that. You know, this this concept of like self love and this concept of I'm doing it for me, not for you. Because the the, the them might not always be there, but the you you have to live with that person every day. When you go to sleep, when you yeah. wake up at night, it's always you. So you have to yeah. make sure you are happy with you, and that's definitely the way to live. I'm 100 percent behind that. You know, um, you 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 mentioned we're going to talk about kids in a second, but you mentioned your experience as you know as a kid, you know, being bullied and how it's kind of changed your life. You know, going to the nutri nutrition stuff and you learn to love yourself. Um, I know a lot of people, you know, either have kids or have been bullied themselves. I speak to a few people, they throw me questions going through depression, anxiety right now. Uh, if we can just backtrack there for a second, if you don't mind, yeah. how, how would you recommend or suggest someone, you know, works on, you know, getting themselves out of that strut when, when they feel shit, when, when they're going through stuff like that, like what you went through as a, as a child? So I have two things to say. The first one, being bullied was actually a blessing in disguise okay. because being the ugly kid 
taught me to develop my personality right. because in my mind as a kid i was like okay well the guys don't like me because i'm not beautiful so let me be funny let right. me be a great soccer player let me be smart in school let me be an independent hard-working girl because obviously my looks aren't gonna aren't gonna work so what else can i do right. so i learned to not have to de like depend on my looks for anything like now obviously like i dye my hair like my lips are done i do my makeup so i can make myself look pretty but it's just like i didn't rely on that i had to develop other things mm. and i think people have this stigma that if you go to therapy something is wrong with you mm. and for me therapy has been the best thing i've ever done in my life because i divulged into my childhood like i guess not traumas because i didn't go through anything traumatic but my childhood insecurities that made me work on myself and like the therapist would throw things in my face that I didn't want to admit to myself that I had to work on and grow into a confident person by myself. No partner could do that for me. Like, you know, and I realized that with my ex, when he mentally abused me and brought me so low, I had to get myself out of that hole alone. And therapy is the best thing like ever. I, we've all been depressed. This year gave me so much anxiety with COVID, you know, and because having gone to therapy, I already had a foundation on how to cope with little triggers that I was able to, I don't have to go to therapy if I don't want to now, because I know now how to get myself into a mental point where I'm okay. Right. You know, if I'm anxious one day, if I feel depressed one day, I, I ride the ride mm. and then I get out of it. But if you're not in that point yet, seek therapy there's nothing wrong with it i actually encourage everybody to do it yeah no no that's beautiful i think you know on, on the therapy element man it is something that you know we all push and you know um, a few of my friends are, are really trying to push that thing in, in in the creative spaces especially you know in the in the athletic spaces you know like sports music arts tapping into you know the mental as early as possible could, mm -hmm. could help with longevity in, in, in every aspect of your lives you know, so I'm 100% for that. No, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So um, that whole thing about your childhood, right? I want to link it on to, to kids as well. Okay. You know, you're, you're, you're doing your thing right now. You're, you're on a roll and you have goals. But you're also a woman with a, you know, as they say, a biological time clock. And it ticks. Yes. Right? So where are you in balancing this out? Like, you obviously want kids. I think we spoke about this briefly. Yes. Um, how does that work for you as, as a woman? Like, cause I know a lot of girls like, I want to do this. I want to do this, but I want kids, you know, you know, how, how do you deal with that pressure? Is there a pressure in your head or is that, you know, what you're going to do? How are you going to do it? I think the pressure is more in my ovaries. Okay. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm just kidding. But like, I think in Hispanic cultures, we're told like, oh my gosh, you have to have a kid by the time you're 30. Cause otherwise like there could be something wrong with the kid, right? right? So it's just like, that's in the back of my mind. Like, oh my gosh, am I taking too long? Like, should I start now? But then it's like, I already established a plan with Adbert that my thing was like, give me a year with mm -hmm. you traveling everywhere so I can fully experience your dream with you. Mm -hmm. Once we've experienced that, I will give you all the kids in the world you want. Because mm. once you have a kid, once you have a baby, it's no longer about you. You know, it becomes about the baby. Mm. And it's it, if you haven't really understood both of your guys' worlds, that's when it can create conflicts. That's when couples argue. That's when it creates insecurities. That's when, you know, she can go sour. So mm. to me, it's like, let me fully understand so I can fully be able to help you. So that when we have kids and I'm stressed because I have, you know, go mom stuff going on and you're stressed, we're able to fully connect and communicate versus arguing, sure. you know, and it's just like also the whole traveling with a baby, you know, like, am I really ready for that? Like, it's going to add so much more pressure and so much responsibility versus right now, Edward's like, babe, we're playing here tomorrow. Can we pack and go? Mm. Pack and go. It's me. But mm. when it, with a baby, it's like, it's a cold. You know, like, do I want him to get sick? Is it worth risking? Like, you know, there's just, it changes our whole relationship that we already have that plan of like waiting. But once, you know, we reach that, it's, you know, no matter how old I am, we're, we're going to try it out, you yeah. know, but yeah. that's what we have. And it's the world is, his world is just unpredictable. Yeah, sure. You know, it's, it's interesting because you, you've attached practical thinking and logical thinking to an emotional decision. You know, and you try to balance the two out, which is, which I'm I'm 100% for, 
you know um but it's it's hard for people to think like that when that time you know when that you know that biological clock starts ticking and it's hard yeah. for people to but it seems like your whole thing in terms of who you are is about stop think and make the right decision make the best possible decision in, in the situation that i'm in and you're not talking about immediate gratification talk about long-term planning long-term benefits in everything you do which which I, I highly respect you know and i think a lot a lot more people not just women not just guys not just girls whatever a lot more people need to be doing stuff like that because a lot of people end up in relationships end up in situationships end up in jobs end up in life decisions because they didn't stop and think where am i going to be 10 years five years from now is this the best thing to do whereas everything you've done so far sounds like it's on it's, it's on it's on point and the universe tends to you know give back what you give in you know, right. if you're thoughtful to that level, it tends to come back and be like, oh, yeah, here you go. Here's, I owe you one. There you go. You know? I think that as humans, we can jeopardize our own success mm. when we think on emotion first mm. versus rational, right? Because, right. of course, I want to be a mom. Like, I could have a baby now, mm. but it's just, like, logically, it just, for us, it just doesn't work. Mm. And at the end of the day, my biggest goal is to be happy. Right. You know, like happiness is my ultimate goal. Yes, yeah, some people, their goal is to have a certain number in the bank. You know, there's certain goals. Like there, everyone has a goal. Mine is to be happy. Right. And if there's anything that is going to mess up with my mental state, I'm going to sit back and think about it for a second. Sure. You know, just sure. to make sure that everything that we're both doing, because we both want to be successful people. So I want to make sure that one of the reasons... I even told his parents I didn't want to have a baby yet was because I felt guilty that I didn't want him to stress about taking care of a wife and a baby and performing his best on the field. Like right now, I just want him to perform his best on the field. I got me. Mm. I can take care of me. But if bringing a baby is going to add a stressor to him, which will impact his career, which will impact his dream, which will impact him, which will impact his mind. Mm. I'm not, I'm not for that. No, that's dope. That's dope. That's very, it's logical and considerate at the same time. Earlier we mentioned, again, you, you know, adding, you know, a bunch of structure and balance into his life. How important is it? How, what, how important is the role of a woman, you know, in a man's life like that? You know, in, 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 a, in a man who is, you know, uh, consi consistently ambitious or consistently trying to get somewhere, how important is the, 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 his partner's position in his life? I think it's very important, you know, and I think that, to be with a successful man, whether it's a businessman or an athlete or, you know, anyone that's striving as a woman or if it's in reverse, if the woman is successful and, you know, you have to be very strong in your person <clears throat> to be okay with whatever happens that you have you, right? So for me, in being his partner, I, I already know who I am and like what my purpose is and what my identity is. So I create the structure and, and anything else that he needs during baseball season, right? So the whole plan that him and I have is baseball season is all about you and baseball. So if that means getting an apartment, moving, planning anything logistically out with our lives, that's me. I handle it because I know I can handle it and mm -hmm. I don't want him to have that stress. So if you're with the if you're a businessman or if you're a businesswoman and you have your partner and you know what their strengths are and what your weaknesses are in reverse, like mm -hmm. use each other to build each other up because at the end of the day the empire is for both of you. Right. You know the right. castle's not just his, it's not just mine, it's for both right. of us. Right. So I think that when you're both strong and you both build each other, you both get to your castle sooner versus if you have an insecure man or an insecure woman, instead of helping you up, they're going to bring you down. Yep. You know, if I spend my time alone at home crying, like, why aren't you texting me? Why aren't you like calling me? Like he's going to be trying to get me into my emotions and then not focus on the reports he has to read for that mm -hmm. night, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So no, that's no. why I think what I think, but I've also gone to therapy. Right. So not a lot of people think like this, but thankfully I've had these like, I guess, I don't know what you call it, guidance right. to be able to develop myself, to be able to think like this. Right, right. That's interesting. I mean, how, how important is that therapy on both ways? You know, because, you know, you said that you've gone to therapy, but would it, is it important for your partner to have gone to therapy as well? Or is it okay if it's just one of you to have been there and it's like, you can, you can, you can help both of you out? You know, I think that everybody, if they feel they need it, it might be important. Um, Adbert came from such a strong family 
and like I love his family that I totally see why he doesn't need therapy mm -hmm. like his dad is like raised them and his mom both did an excellent job at raising all three of them mm -hmm. that like he is such a level-headed confident man hard-working person he knows what his goals are mm -hmm. that like he doesn't really think he needs therapy which is great if you don't need it for mm -hmm. me like my mind was like a ups and downs kind of thing growing up. Right, right. So I seeked it for myself to better understand myself. And like, were those childhood irrationality insecurities real? Or mm -hmm. was it something I learned from my family? Sure, you know, so sure. because his childhood was so different, he yeah, doesn't need it. And why go if you don't need it? I wanted it for myself. So I took it. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. I mean, I keep asking about the importance of a woman's role in a man's life. How important is the man's role in the woman's life but in a sense more specifically what kind of man does a woman who is on her shit need you know what kind of man is the kind of man that supports the queen of today you know um i think it personally a man that's not insecure right in the sense of like if you if your girl is busy all day and she doesn't call you she's busy all day building an empire it's yeah. not like she's busy doing other things and she just doesn't yeah. call you you know yeah. so it's just like you just have to be strong and know that when your woman is working she's doing the same thing you would be doing mm -hmm. so why not let her do this or not let her do that or call me at this time or check in at this time or why do you make more money than me like why mm -hmm. does that matter when you're both building together mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. like you just both have to be strong people yeah yeah i mean you know maybe not with your immediate circles, but latching onto another stereotype, you know, the trophy wife idea. Uh, a lot of people have this idea that, you know, a lot of wags are there to be um, seen and not to be heard. You know, have, have, you, have you come across that in not necessarily your immediate circles or, or in any of your circles? Have you seen this in real life, like after you've gone into that world? No, I only saw it on TV. Okay, that's interesting. So TV is pushing this concept then that you know a lot of, you know athletes wives and girlfriends are just literally just the trophies but in reality like you said it's not necessarily like that no i mean the wives are the one that pack the bag the wives are the one that pick up and go the wives are the ones that take care of the kids the wives are the ones that do so much so to just play like this thing on tv it's that's what it is it's tv yeah yeah i, I wonder what that is you know i, I always have this this question of are they just trying to reinforce stereotypes, misogynistic stereotypes kind of thing, and why? Why are they not pushing more people like you or more women like you? And they're pushing the, the concept of ratchetness and dependency so much. It's just a weird one to me, you know? It's probably for ratings. Yeah. Because if they, if they really followed us around with the camera, they'd be like, this is really what you guys do? Like, you know, like, pack up, go here, there. Like, we don't fight. We don't, like... I mean, at least not in my immediate circle. We all support each other. So it's just like, they, it's 100% scripted for ratings because I've yet to meet someone like that. Okay. So don't believe everything you see on TV. No, definitely uh, not. I appreciate that. Diana, this has been dope. <laughs> no, this has been dope, man. Thank you very much for this. Do you have any last words for these people before, before we end today's live? The first of many, hopefully. You know, do you have anything you want to say? Anything you want to share? Um, you asked me a question about what I want to do with my platform. Yes. And if there's anything that I like want people to take from this podcast is one, I don't want to be famous. I don't want to be like a Kim Kardashian. I literally want to use my platform for good. So when we reach the point where Edward is successful and, you know, gets a contract, my ultimate goal is to help with immigration. And the reason for that is because there's a lot of free, uh, international free agent athletes that come from the Dominican Republic, Venezuela, Colombia, you know, and they, uh, a lot of them don't go to school because they get drafted like when they're really young. So they come right. here, they get sold this dream that they're going to be professional baseball players and they're going to make it right. And then they get cut. Mm. And it's either do I go back home to the DR? Do I go back home to Venezuela where there's nothing for me? Or do I stay here legally? Mm. And when you stay here legally, you don't always get the best job. You don't always learn the language. You don't know how this culture works. Like it's very hard living in America. Mm. And mm. I really want to focus on kind of like DACA for here in America for, for um, people that come from out of the country to study here in school. Okay. I would love to start a program to help those athletes 
readapt to this because baseball really took so much of their youth that going mm -hmm. back to school, they're already too old to finish mm -hmm. high school. They're, they could, you know, do a GED here, but you need to like know how it works, you know? Sure. So sure. that is ultimately what my goal is okay. to do that, to help those athletes that need kind of like that. The transition and the growth transition. And adapted yes. into, into the, 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 the Western world kind of thing. Right. Yeah. No, that's sick. That's sick. No, I mean, hopefully, you know, that, that journey, you know, gets, gets on the way and hopefully, you know, we can, we can jump in and some, somehow, some, some fashion in the future and help, help along. I, I, I envision it happening. You know, the bigger he gets, the bigger you get, that, that dream becomes inevitable, you know, as long as you stick with it, you know, fingers crossed. I'll manifest it, you know, manifest, it's man. so speaking, powerful, the universe is so powerful. Speaking to, speaking to existence. All for the best and that's, you always do prepare for the worst because that's what you do. You're a planner. Dan, I really appreciate your time. Uh, thanks a lot for this. You know, hope you speak no, to some of your you. friends soon. You know, this has been great. This has been great. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for everyone in the comments. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity. And I can't wait to see you grow. Thank and you I'm out. Thank Bye. You. Take care, guys. Have a good one. And say hi to Adbert for us as well. Thank you. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for tuning in. I'm going to throw it on my podcast channels. It's all going to be there for you guys to listen to. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Deezer. Um, but thanks a lot, guys. I mean, see you on the next edition of More Than. I am more. I am more. I am more. See you later. What's it called? No silicone. No silicone. No silicone. No silicone. No silicone. No silicone. No silicone.